What's up? This is Kong from X Faders, and in this video, I would like to walk you through the steps required to install a Mini Inno Fader Plus solder version into your Roland DJ202. The purpose for this upgrade is to replace your OEM crossfader with one that's more reliable, more rugged, and has a sharper cut in than the basic crossfader that's included with the Roland DJ202. Before I actually get started, I want to send a huge shout out to the staff and support team over there at Inno Fader. Thank you so much for your support and all your help in making sure that we get these devices installed properly. I would like to start off by listing all the tools and supplies that I use to get this job done. I'm not saying that you have to purchase everything exactly like what I have, but at least have some of these items that will make this installation a lot easier. In the top right corner of this video, I've listed all the supplies and tools that I use. I'll also place it down in the description section below. Quick disclaimer, some of the tools that I'm using in this video may cause bodily harm. Please be aware that I'm not responsible for any bodily injury that you incur using these products. If you're not comfortable soldering or getting any of these things done yourself, please seek assistance. To be clear, I'm not a level 10 soldering wizard. I've just had some experience over the years, especially working with DJ and equipment and electronics. So what I recommend to you, if you are new to it, I would suggest uh, purchasing a breadboard so you can practice for a minute. I don't think it takes a lot of skill to get this job done, but it does take some patience. So when you first receive it, it's probably going to be in configuration one, um, which is up here, where the pin that you're using is going to be the ground and the VCA2 and the VCC, right, is here. What I found is I actually went with configuration four, where the VCC is on the left side, um, the VCA2 is on the right, and the ground is right next to it. These two pins here, the ground and the VCA1, as well as the VCA here, are not in use. And the reason why I say that is because this is the original crossfader that comes inside of it. So when you look at the pins that are being used, you're only using the VCC on the top half there and the top two pins, which is the VCA2 and the ground. Now what they're referencing here in the circled area is those jumpers. So uh, let's see if I can show you here. So I'll take this there. So right here, um, the orientation of the jumpers are vertical. So they bridge the two solder joints or the solder points here are vertical. And they're both vertical here as well as here. Okay. So this is what we're trying to do. So we're trying to change it from this orientation here, which is two horizontal and two vertical to all of the jumpers are vertical. So let's start by removing all 15 screws on the case. They're here highlighted in green. So take your time, make sure you locate each one of the holes and gently pry off the case. So I would recommend spinning around the controller so that the crossfader section is actually directly in front of you in the bottom section here below. If you haven't already, go ahead and remove the fader cap and take a moment and locate the three screws that are holding in the crossfader. Now there are a bunch of ways to remove the crossfader from the controller. The particular method that I used was using a desoldering wick. I know there's a desoldering pump and a couple other things you can use to do it. But for me, the wick was the easiest. If you are having issues, make sure you use flux. And if you're having problems removing solder from it, add a little bit more to it. Make sure you heat it up enough for it to mix and then use a desoldering wick to remove the solder from it. I also recommend using the 99% isopropyl alcohol to clean up the area or the surfaces that you use the flux. Even if you have a no clean flux, it's still probably a good idea to keep the area clean with the alcohol. In this scene here, the original crossfader is at the bottom and the inner fader is at the top. The idea behind this is you would need to bend the pins or cut them. I probably recommend bending them down to match the original crossfader. So as you can see here in the next shot, I'll show you the top left one needs to remain up and the top two on the right side need to remain up. So the ones that are in the red circle need to be either cut or bent down. Again, I probably recommend bending them down. 
So go ahead and grab your needle nose pliers and uh, start bending those pins down. Take your time here. You don't need to rush. Just gently apply a little bit of pressure and bend them away from the center of the crossfader. This will prevent you from allowing it to touch any other parts of the board unnecessarily. So let's take a minute and discuss what's going to happen next. So bending these pins down does create a little bit of surface tension on the PCB. So I would highly recommend taking a moment and just deciding for yourself what works best for you, what you believe to be reliable. For me, the blue cables that's connected to the switch are just as thick as the pins bent down. So when I lined up the holes and placed it back on the PCB, you can tell that it was still kind of a little thick and I had to apply a little bit of pressure to get enough of the pins to protrude outside of the back end of the board. Now we can all agree that any amount of pressure can cause issues, especially when the board heats up and cools down, it tends to flex and could cause issues later. But for me, I didn't feel like this was gonna be any problems here, so I just went ahead and moved forward. It's also important that I kept in the mistakes that I made during this installation. And you'll see here shortly that I added a little too much solder to one of the pins and I had to clean a little bit off. But these are the things that can happen at least, and at least to show that you can correct them. In this step, I'm adding a small amount of solder to each one of the pins. This is just used to hold it in place momentarily. I will be going back and adding more solder and heating them up again to make sure that I do not have any cold solder joints. What those are is if you have contaminants on the board or if you're using insufficient heat, it will cause the solder points to break off the board. If you have any issues, be sure to use some flux in those areas. Here, as mentioned earlier, I added a little too much solder to this pin here and I had to remove some with some of the desoldering wick. As you can see here, the anode fader is installed. Uh, I don't know if you can see here the gap in the pins, but it's pretty much installed. Um, I ran the switch uh, through the side that has the mini anode fader label here. All right, this is the plate that comes with the um, factory install. You need to put that back inside of here so there's little holes here that you line up you got it let's see so as you can see there is it's lined back up all right for now i'm just gonna come out of the side of it with the switch because you'll need to program the inno fader. So we'll put it back inside of here. All right. So you got the switch here, right here on the inside. So you can program it. All right. As far as the screws, you'll take the small screws here. So, and you will put two right here and just snug them down. Not overly tight, but just snug them down. Right. I'll spin this around so you can see. So. And the switch is just hanging out the side there, right? There's another screw that goes right here, but we'll add that in momentarily. What we'll need to do is program this device. So, <clears throat> a lot of different configurations here. Um, I would recommend that you leave it in the default setting. The only thing that you'll need to change is the output needs to be reversed. So right here, the factory ABC, um, 
and then the output reversed is CBA. Remember, when we place a crossfader in, it is in reverse. So in this case, C would be over here, B and A. So we got our computer on. What we'll do is go ahead and plug in the USB cable. And that will turn on the controller. So right now the controller is lit up, it's on. So what you need to do is open up Serato. And just choose any track. So now when you play the track, you see it's in reverse. So this track over here is playing. But when you move it over here, it's actually in reverse, right? So what we need to do is this becomes C now. So it's C, B, A. So press and hold the button, move it this way, let go the button. So now fader's off, it's set up correctly now. All right, so if you're comfortable, you know, congratulations, you have installed the Innofader Mini solder version in your controller and you're pretty much ready to put it back together so I'll, I'll take you through that process here real quick go ahead and unplug it from usb and flip it back over here now i would recommend i would recommend that you do not leave this this button here um, you can if you want to. I just think because the, the case itself is not rigid, you may find yourself, um, I guess, rubbing up against it um, over time. So what I recommend doing is just sort of pulling a fader out just a little bit and just bending it down to go underneath. Uh, you shouldn't have to make any changes, but it, if you feel like you, you know, you're going to be constantly making changes to the, to the uh, settings of it, then yeah, you can leave it there. Um, until you get things dialed in, but for the most part, I just go with, with that. You have the stickers. Well, let's do this first. Um, your choice, the the Innofader cap here and the original one here. Depends on which one you like. Um, the thickness plays a difference, plays a role. So um, the other thing is too, when you place it on, um, don't push it all the way down. Just make it sort of snug, which you're comfortable with. Make sure everything is smooth. Probably push it down a little more. There you go. And then if you like, just to let people know that you do have an inner fader inside of here, um, put your sticker on it. Um, put it anywhere, but I would probably recommend putting it here. So to get it in the center of the fader. And there you have it. 
So before I wrap up the video, I would like to send a huge shout out to Zounds. If you need any audio equipment, and in my case, DJing equipment, please check out their website. The link is in the description below. So I can't leave off this video without providing you with a short demo. Now bear in mind, I am not a turntablist, but I'm trying my best to show you how well this crossfader works in this controller. <laughs> so that's pretty much all i got i'd like to thank you for watching and hanging in there with me please like share and subscribe and check out the website at www.xfaders.com